Good morning and welcome to Sunrise. If you will, please stand as you are able for our opening hymn.
Come on up. Oh my gosh, you guys are fast. Holy rapido. You have super speed. Ooh, can you teach that? It's totally super speed. What? This is like my dad, my mommy's favorite. That's one of her favorite songs. That's one of her favorite songs? That's one of my favorite songs, too. Isn't it a cool one to sing? And I think we're doing it the next couple of weeks, too. Yeah, sorry to give that away. Um, so I have in my hand a thermostat. Have you guys ever seen one of these? Yeah, at your home, are you allowed to touch it? Or is your dad like, no? Yeah, yeah, it's the same way in my home. I put it up really high so none of the kids can reach it. Although now they're getting to be my height and taller. It's not fair. So I have a thermostat. I wanted to talk about this because you guys know what a thermometer is, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll tell you the temperature of the room, but a thermostat is different. It sets the temperature of the room. So you could set, like on a really cold day, you could set it so your house is warm. And on a really warm day, you could set it cold so your house is really cold. And sometimes in Colorado Springs, you can do that on the very same day. And so I have this thermostat, and it sets the temperature of the room. And there were some verses I was thinking of that are really thermostat verses. They set the temperature. Like, we just sang about this little light of mine. And it's this idea that light shines in the darkness. And Jesus says this cool thing, that darkness can never overcome light, but light always overcomes darkness and it's the ability of light to always shine in always change the color the temperature of a room and so i've got one thermostat verse that we are going to do together you guys ready we got motions and everything so we're going to say set an example and we're going to say in life in love in speech in faith, and in purity. And we make this little halo above our head, so make a halo. Halo, you should be good at this. It's your name and a halo. There's this verse, I don't want anyone to look down on you because you are young, but I want you to set an example in life, in love, in speech, in faith, in purity. And so it's this thing, if you're in school and people are saying mean things, God says, I don't want you to join them in mean things. I want you to change the way the room goes, and I want you to say kind things. If you've got a friend who's hurting, I want you to come in and be an example of love. Give them a hug, cheer them up, tell them you love them, or just that they're not alone. We get to set an example. We get to change the temperature of a room by our life, our love, our speech, our faith, our purity. So let's do this verse together again. And do you guys have a little more loudness in you? Yeah. I even heard it, like, hide it under a bushel, and you guys said, yeah. See, I knew you could be loud. And so we're going to do set an example. Set an example. In, life. in life. In love. In, love. in speech. In, speech. In, faith. in faith. And in purity. In purity. Amen. Go to Sunday school. What? I love you too. What? I should be on now. I'm sorry. That was all my fault, just so you all know. I turned my mic off. Uh, welcome to worship at Sunrise United Methodist Church. I am so grateful that you are here today, in person, online, or sometime during the week. I do believe that you will get a glimpse of the sacred at some point while we gather together. Will you please take a moment to fill out your friendship folder, pass it down along your pew, and take this moment to take a, take a look around, see who is here worshiping with us this morning, maybe see if there's any guests and say hello, and then also notice who is not here this morning and make sure that you connect with them sometime during the week and let them know that they were missed. 
If you desire to receive communion, you can do that immediately following the service. Come forward right up here and somebody will um, serve you communion. If you desire to join the church, the time to do that is during the final hymn, during the final verse of the final hymn. Bring the membership card forward and I will be happy to welcome you as a member in the life of Sunrise United Methodist Church. As always, there's a lot going on, maybe especially a lot more because we are in the midst of a busy fall time. Right now, we are in the midst of our pledge drive, so you should have received a card. If you did not receive a card, there's a pile of them on the table right outside the sanctuary doors, or you can pledge online. Next weekend is our pledge weekend. So Saturday night at the loft, Sunday morning, we will invite you to come down during service and drop your pledge cards in the, in the pledge box. Um, I am excited. It's been a really good season of learning about you and talking about money. So... Um, so next weekend, bring your pledge cards in. So United Methodist Men, UMM, are still singing, selling their Christmas greens. I promise I can talk. It's just one of those days. So the Christmas greens right out there, and they're doing that through November 6th. So if you want to order your greens, do so soon. So next weekend, so immediate, actually immediately following this, service, we are striking the chancel area and Adam's family is going to start going up from uh, players. So there's a couple of things that, that might happen next weekend. You are going to walk in and the time has changed. So if you happen to forget to change your clocks, you'll be here an hour early. Uh, there, won't, the, there will be an Adam's family set, no screens, and you won't recognize anybody. Um, you did not step into the twilight zone. You just forgot to change your clock. So the clock next week changes. We will not have screens up, so bring your reading glasses because we will be singing out of the hymnal next week. They're the little books right in front of you. It's been a while, right? Um, so, and then the order of worship will be exactly the same at both services, which doesn't affect you, but it does affect the nine o'clock service. Finally, campfire worship. Last time it was a hit. Everybody had so much fun. So I invite you to come down November 12th at 5 p.m. for campfire worship. It is, I, heard, I hear it was an amazing time last time. And come join us for campfire worship. There's a lot going on in the life of Sunrise. I invite you to look online for more information. Sign up for the e-news that, that it comes right to you and for more information. As we move into our time of offering, I would like to invite the ushers forward and I would like to acknowledge the ways in which God uses your gifts to bless others. Uh, some weeks I have a hard time thinking like, what am I gonna say? But this week it was easy. We had an amazing weekend. So trunk or treat, a lot of you saw that. The atrium was full of kids and a bounce house and a cakewalk and the parking lot had cars that were decorated and it was just fun. The energy in the space was fun. And we had a youth event this weekend. Let me tell you something I am so excited about. Your youth group is the fastest growing part of this church right now. I am proud of them. It, during a time that it's almost impossible to grow a youth group, you guys are growing it. So we have amazing staff and volunteers um, doing that and kids inviting their friends. All of this is possible because of your faithful giving. Sunrise, you are a faithful community. Thanks be to God. Let us return to worship now and the giving of our gifts.
all grace. You pour so much into our lives. Help us show our gratitude by taking these gifts, blessing them, using them for your love in this world. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, quite frankly, today's scripture is a bit of a cliffhanger. But the broader story surrounding it teaches us about having the courage to act and also the power of prayer. The idea of praying for things to happen and then having those prayers answered is a difficult one. We like to think that we're in control and we struggle with the idea of handing over the reins to you. It is easy to become comfortable in the lives we have built and can be uncomfortable to speak up when we see or hear things that we know go against what you teach us. Lord, give us the strength to believe in you and in ourselves. Help us to overcome the uncomfortable and have conversations that matter, even if they aren't easy. Today we are surrounded by wars, tragedies, sickness, and sorrow. We ask this morning that you lift up those who are struggling both physically and mentally. Give them the strength to overcome, wisdom to see you, the freedom to worship you. Be with our elected leaders and our incoming elected leaders, our servicemen and women, our first responders, and our many shepherds here at Sunrise Church. We thank you for the opportunity to gather every week here, to be spiritually refreshed, and leave with a renewed sense of hope that your kingdom will come and your will be done. Please join me now as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who art, who in, art heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. morning. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Esther, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace, opposite the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne inside the palace, opposite the entrance to the palace. <clears throat> as soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she won his favor, and he held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the top of the scepter. The king said to her, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you, even to the half of my kingdom. Then Esther said, if it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet that I have prepared for the king. Then the king said, bring Haman quickly so that we may do as Esther desires. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. While they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, What is your petition? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to, half, to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Esther said, This is my petition and request. If I have won the king's favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet that I will prepare for them, and then I will do as the king has said. The word of God for the people of God.
So I'm going to do something that I've never done before, which is no longer true because I did it at the last service. Um, but I am going to start my sermon with the end and then work my way to the end. So did you know that sunrise in the early 2000s was the second largest United Methodist Church in the jurisdiction. So from Colorado to Hawaii, from Alaska down to the Mexico border, only behind one church in California, which had 20 more people per week in attendance. You know, the blessing of being such a large, growing congregation is that you are a beacon of light. People see you. You know what the curse of being the largest, a large, growing congregation is? The spotlight is on you. You are a beacon of light. Everybody sees you through all of the ups and downs of the history of sunrise. You all have made headlines. Unfortunately, people don't always see the stories behind the headlines. But I have been really lucky over the last four months as I have met with you, as I have read through your archives and meeting minutes and reports and histories and stories. What I see, what I see in you, and I hope you all see in yourself, is that everything in the history of sunrise, the good, and the bad, the hard moments, and the moments full of joy, all of it, God has used to create you into a community that is wise. You have the wisdom of a community that's been through a lot. Compassionate. You all are a compassionate courageous, kind, welcoming community. Who knows? Maybe you were formed as Sunrise United Methodist Church for just a time as this. Let us pray. Oh God, open us up. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our ears that we might hear. God, open our hearts that we might feel. And then, oh God, open our hands that when we leave this place, we might leave here to serve you and your love. Amen. Once upon a time... A long, long time ago, there was a queen. Her name was Esther. But like most stories, her story began long before she was queen. You see, generations before her, her the Babylonians had taken her people out of their land into exile. They had destroyed the temple where they believed God resided. And then the Persian Empire took over the Babylonian Empire, crushed them. And some of the Jewish people went home, went to rebuild the temple, but not all of them. I mean, they had been living under the Persian rule in the Persian Empire for generations. Why would they want to go to this unknown land? And that is where Esther was born. Esther was an orphan. 
She was raised by her uncle Mordecai into a very beautiful young lady. But you know, she was not queen nor born to be a queen. And in fact, there was another queen named Vashti. And Vashti was beautiful. And the king was throwing a party, a multi-day feast. And he decided on the seventh day that he was going to invite Vashti. He was going to invite her, tell her to come to the feast. And he was going to parade her in front of all the men so they would see how beautiful she was. She refused, so he discarded her. So now he had to find a new queen. So it was sort of like a beauty pageant, just bringing all of the single young ladies in the empire so he could see and pick out the one he wanted. And he picked out Esther. So Esther was the new queen, but she couldn't bring her uncle with her. Her uncle had to sit outside the city gates. And this, this is where the villain comes into the story. If we were doing a melodrama, this is where you all would boo as Haman comes in and arrives on the scene. Haman was one of those guys that he just really liked people to let him know how amazing he was. So as he walked down the roads, people had to bow down to him. But you know who wouldn't do it, right? Mordecai would only bow down He would never bow down in front of anybody because he would only bow down for his God and he would not worship Haman. So Haman, this villain, decided he was going to have all of the Jews killed, all of them, their stuff taken. And Mordecai heard He sends a message into his niece, Esther, please, you are in a position, you are in a place to do something about it. Please, please do something to save your people. And she sends a message back, no, I can't just walk in to the king's chambers. That could lead to my death. I can't. So he replied to her. Mordecai sent her this message. Don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else. But you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for just such a time as this. All of her story brought her into this place, the good and the bad, brought her into a place that she could do something at a time that she was desperately needed. And I see that. In Sunrise's story, I see how our past has shaped and formed us and put us in a place with the hope and the joy that can help us do amazing things. Who knows? Maybe you were formed a sunrise for such a time as this. So Esther did. She did what she could do. She went into the king's chambers, and and that is the text that you heard a little earlier. It was a risk for her. But the king accepted her and promised her 
whatever she wanted, up to half the kingdom. Her story unfolds. Haman, the villain, is put to death. And Mordecai, her uncle, is put in charge. Like Esther's story, Sunrise's story begins long before sunrise. Those that have come before the Methodists that have come into the area, those pastors that were appointed, that decided to start a church here, and the headlines, there have been moments those headlines are big and awesome. Northwest Fellowship starting in Colorado Springs. Sunrise United Methodist Church, merging with Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Together, they will build a building in three phases. But you know, the stories under those headlines are so much more, so beautiful. I mean, some of them are just simple, like the request from the Children's Learning Center if they would allow Sunrise to to put a metal cabinet into the school because it is exhausting carrying hymnals in and out week after week. Or what about the stories that I keep hearing of putting up chairs how that built this community into a community of, that was full of joy and excitement, working together, working towards getting something done. That story of Cherry Watts lifting up the name Sunrise because it meant new beginnings. There's so many stories under the headlines. And of course, there's been many through the years, some good and some bad. We bought a campus on Woodman. Sold a campus on Woodman. But you know what's not told in those headlines? The stories of the thrift store It made money, yes, but it brought in people. We got to see them, get to know them, hear their stories. They got to hear ours. And ironically, stories of putting up chairs week after week, putting together a worship service. You laugh together. You are full of joy and energy and life. These moments helped form and create who this community is. Moments have been hard. Some have been good. Staff leaving, new staff coming on conflict, and yet all of it, all of it has created you into a community that I hope you know you can be proud of. I experience in you a community that is patient a community that is compassionate, kind, welcoming, wise. And I experience in you these things that are created through years of being community together. Did you know that in the early 2000s, Sunrise United Methodist Church was the second largest church in the jurisdiction, Colorado to Hawaii. 
Alaska to the Mexico border. You were second only by 20 people. The blessing of being such a growing, vibrant church is that you are a beacon of light and hope. Everybody sees you. The curse, of course, is that the spotlight is on you. Everybody sees you. Everybody sees the headlines, the hears what's going on, but not everybody sees the depths of the stories, the beauty in this community, the wisdom and caring and gentleness and kindness and welcoming that this community is. Excitement and joy. I believe all of it. Every moment, every breath. That that, that you were formed as sunrise for this very time. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you please stand as we continue worshiping God together? With open hands, ready to receive. Receive now peace, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit. Take it out with you into this world and share it. Amen. <laughs> 